All right, welcome back. It's still News Up. Whilst we would have to pause the conversation with Dr. Uh, Yinka Kweke, let's dive into this one quickly. Still talking about um, the, uh, uh, the Russian-Ukraine crisis and uh, the, 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 the fate of many Nigerians that were trapped, or rather, yet yeah, trapped in Ukraine. And um, a few of them have found their way back home uh, to Nigeria. Some have found their way back to the borders and uh, hoping to be uh, moved out. Yes, uh, let's quickly uh, call on Blessing. Blessing, Blessing Mubusa is joining us again. Uh, she keeps us, keeps us up to speed with uh, the development in around, about um, Nigerians um, in, in Ukraine, Nigerians trapped in Ukraine. Uh, Blessing, if you're there, a fantastic morning to you. Uh, good to have you join us on the show good again morning. this morning. Good. Good morning. Yes, thank you, Blessing. Yes, uh, quick, quickly, Blessing, I, I, I want to believe that um, the current development uh, within that space um, is something that you that can put a bit of a smile on your face. Uh, let me start off with your mm -hmm. brothers. I'm a lot more concerned about that. Uh, tell me their position as we speak right now. Um, yeah, they're doing okay. Um, the last time I spoke to them yesterday, um, they talked about how some universities approached them for... Um, offering them admission in Europe and offering them job opportunities if they decide to stay behind. And um, I think one of them asked them about the school fees and they were, the school was like, oh, they're willing to go down on the school fees if they would um, agree to go to that school. I think one of them was a business school and the other one is in aviation, so I guess he hasn't also gotten a school. So, um, But I'm still yet to decide on um, uh, what next for them. So I needed the other one to get his passport first before we know what next we have plans for them as a family. Sure, um, your voice sounds more relaxed than, than the, the way it was before due to the tension and the energy of, you know, all, all of the conflicts going on and Nigerians who were walking thousands of miles to flee the conflicts in Ukraine. It appears that there is now more action by the Nigerian government and the Russian forces are also giving a leeway for those who are trapped in between the conflict to make uh, an escape, uh, so to speak, of the situation. Um, how would you describe all of the developments in recent days, allowing for more Nigerians uh -huh. to leave home for Nigeria and, you know, and, and uh, for there, neighboring countries? There, there hasn't really been any development from Nigerian, on the Nigerian part. That's not true. There had not been any um, improvement you know, you have the delegates ahead in Poland really doing nothing. As I speak to you right now, you have students, the students in Sumi, were really released through the help of an Indian organization. Nigerian government did not do anything to help those students in Sumi. So anybody saying that they contributed is a big lie. Is that an Indian organization who took it upon themselves to contact the school authorities and do the needful um, dialogue that made it possible for those foreign students to leave Sumi? And even when they leave, left Sumi, like yesterday I said, many of them, they were only dropped at Potava, which is almost eight, um, eight hours from Sumi. The, normally, the journey would be like four to five hours. Some of them paid their way through the borders. Paying their way through the borders, some spent $1,000. Even as I speak right now, um, some of them who are in Hungary do not have an accommodation. The hotels, they are charging $200 a night. Even in Romania, there's a, 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 one of the parents were supposed to join us. Her daughter got to Romania, and the embassy only paid for one day and abandoned the student. And some of them are thrown out in the street. Some of them do not have accommodation. It's cold there. Some of them are sick already. So the Nigerian government, uh-uh. I do not know where the $8.5 million went to, but it hasn't been distributed accordingly, and it hasn't gotten to the student properly. They say, oh, we transport the student, we take them back. Yes, we have some first batch that has arrived in Nigeria, second batch. What happens to them while they are waiting for the aircraft to come? What happens to them? I, I haven't slept in weeks, weeks, like right now over where i am it's like 3 a.m in the morning so i have to wake up stay awake long hours just to talk to students just to see how to dialogue to help people uh, navigate their way i had to send some of them doctors uh gladys number and so many other of our um, team leaders who are helping the student out get cheaper accommodation or hostels where they could stay or also fund their uh, their accommodation for a while so it, it's it's the, the nigerian government 
government? No. There are some few state governments who have been working on um, um, sending money or sending help to the students. And of course, we know how Nigerian is. If you call someone and say, oh, I need um, help for you to help X, Y, Z, they ask you how many of my states, uh, uh, state persons are there, how many of the students from my states are there. So it's more like everybody wants to help their own. And so um, most people say, oh, I will, uh, we didn't send the children to Ukraine. We didn't ask them to study abroad. But the truth is that if our educational system is good, this won't happen. A lot of parents are going through a whole lot. It is not as easy as people think. Some of the students, some of their parents sacrificed so much for them to study in Ukraine. My organization so far, a lot of us are professionals, doctors, pilots, pilots, engineers, um, um, people in medical field daily jobs they have to sacrifice their time for the past three weeks looking for means and ways to help the students for how to make them comfortable because the truth is whatever we like it or not even those we feel that studied in nigeria some students will end up being inventors uh doctors they will end up being great people in future do leave a, a a landmark behind or something to put a scar in their heart i would say you know what my con when i needed help so why bother myself why go through the stress of doing X, Y, Z? I don't need to be paid to my country. Some of these people who are saying, oh, those students uh, study abroad, how can they help the economy? It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, some of you will be CEOs. You need most of these students to even help you. You need some of these CEOs to establish big multi-million dollar companies to be able to help. Um, it's, very, um, it's very painful and heartbreaking and um, we, we, our organization, even um, which is the FSN Aid, had to come up with a fundraising plan of $2 million to see how to help the students go. And it's, it's appealing to Nigerians. I'm appealing to them the best way they can. Nothing is too small. You go to the website, which is www.foreignstrandednigerians.com, to help and best way they can so that these students will be helped you know you never know some of them might be your future them might be those who will impact your generation you know some of them might be some of them might be ministers why don't we leave something behind and affect their life the best way we can true 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 blessing very well said you, you know you, you can't you couldn't have said it any better that you've just said it. I mean, this is election, election year, uh, and rather than our politicians spending money uh, and trying to uh, buy people, these are these are ways they can they can sell 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 themselves as humanitarians uh, worthy of. Um, uh, positions and in leadership. Uh, Blessing, you talked about um, uh, data that you've gathered over over the over the last few few weeks. Um, uh, have anybody come for you? Come to you for those data? I'm talking about government. Are, are they working with you uh, in uh, using the data uh, to help or reach out to these Nigerian, Nigerian students? Are they help? Are they coming to you? Um, I had a situation where I called one of the state uh, government uh, governors in the south south. I told him about the situation and I told him your your people, in fact, this, these are children, they need your help. And he said, oh, um, someone gave me data and um, they said over this amount of students. Like, no, we, from the data we have collected and from the things we have, um, um, the, all the data we've collected, as in at presently, when we collect this data, we'll make sure we'll verify it and Ukraine or not because you know there's an age where in the internet it's easy people could uh, um, create um, data and give to you and say these amounts of people are there so what we do we have a systematical way of getting them and knowing and approving their location getting full details and we, we divide them in whereby um, some state governors ask for the people from their state we give them this information for free we are not asking them to and most times we we'll ask them, please do not send money to people you don't, you know, do not send money just to any random person. We have situation where parents have reached out to some of these governors and they've given them a, what they use their children alone, which is not so right. It's it's not it's not proper. You know, they are so um, yes, we have collected data and we're still collecting much data as much as possible and still. Have to know the mindset of these children because the most important thing is not collecting this data knowing um, knowing what they intend to do 
with themselves even when they come back to nigeria what's their plan because we do not want to leave the students hanging there or just doing nothing and also having to create a counseling for the student uh, in various ways um having to talk to them see their psychological level having to deal with those that have ptsd or those who are suffering from trauma there are so many some of them have been have rape cases kidnapping in fact we had one of our lead um foreign um uh, to Poland uh, border uh, to look at the situation where foreigners, especially, are taken to certain places and beaten badly. In this in this time of war, rape goes. You know, a lot of young ladies, their life is not safe. You know, they will not. Be, they will be so ashamed to even speak about it. So we are creating an forum where even when we go, you go to our website, we we'll have a forum where we ask students fill a form if you need help. To tell you tell us your story so we know the best way to help you transition through this uh, changes right blessing um when we mentioned earlier about nigeria's plans to evacuate um over 300 students said to be trapped in ukraine um the minister of foreign affairs jeffrey oyema actually came out on his twitter page and disclosed that the buses had been provided through the Ukrainian government, uh, through Sarah International Europe, and a couple of other ones he posted on his Facebook page, thanking them for their contributions, as well as um, the Nigerian ambassador to Ukraine, Shina Alege, for his determination uh, mm -hmm. and perseverance. That's according to Jeffrey Mima this morning. Uh, but, you know, all of the expenses uh, that the students have been incurring has been a cause of concern for many Nigerians. One of them who spoke in an interview disclosed that they've spent almost $1,000 to $2,000 within their time of, you know, movement around and, of course, getting food to eat, especially in this very difficult time. Um, how do you think that is affecting some of those students who are there and um, the health that they might be in at this particular moment in time? Well, it's so interesting that... Um <clears throat> Most of the Nigerian government uh, um, of they act they act very smart and they don't realize that this is a jet age where the internet is available to all and where information travels faster than the speed of light. You know, it, you can't just gather information and get people um, giving you um, details after some others have worked. Uh, uh, one person is working, another person is eating. That's what is going on. The, the, even the Nigerian ambassador um, to Ukraine, when he was, when um, um, the ambassador to Ukraine was reached out to, you had the Nigerian uh, um, um, student uh, president spoke to her and said, "Do any most of the moves she claimed in court she did wasn't from her own end, was from foreigners and the Indian organizations. Yes, you are thanking them, but what effort did you make?" Did you ever even send any of these kids money? Did you ever bow to them and give them moral support? No. There are a lot of them that they were, they, they, were, they were sick. Did you ever send anything down? No. You know, at a point, in fact, this morning, while I was talking to one of the students, I needed her to uh, come online. And this is what she said to me. She said, sorry, um, um, uh, right now I'm so tired. I haven't showered for two days. I haven't eaten any food or anything in the past five days. I barely even trying to get myself together. I am not put together. At a point, it felt like I was even pressurizing this young lady. I told her, I said, see, your voice has to be heard. And so I'm also pleading to those students who had this experience, speak out, because the only way we can have reformation in our country and the only way we can have change if, if people say the truth and don't allow the government or any government uh, um, leader come out and uh, do mind games or manipulation, because that's what is going on here. An idea where a set of people are giving money to do something, they go there, they do not work, they spend it on themselves and their family, they have lavish uh, outings and, uh, um, and settled so many people they know we're going to probe them that around and have fun with it you know it's not it's not right in any way or form but having to say the nigerian government yeah they did well in order to release this money they did well by taking some of the students back home but what is the plan now what are they still doing now it's like they are sitting down waiting for others 
work um, for the students who are stranded in, in, the, in inside Ukraine and say, oh, when, you, when they come out, we'll deal with them. Even when they do, right now, they are not. Mm. So the, let's call it spade a spade. Mm. You know, you don't just take information and put on the internet, on Twitter, to show that you are working. So it's more like an Instagram or Twitter job. So they are all employees or influential there. They are not no longer doing the job that they do on the ground, which is wrong. You know, I also commend some other governors who have sent their uh, aides to um, SSAs to reach out to us. Like in house has almost um, hundred, more than hundred um, students stranded there. But I'm talking about up to two of up to three hundred, two to three hundred database students from the west. Um, you have up to two hundred, yeah, two hundred and fifty from the north. You still have up to a hundred students who are stranded in. And then from the um, east, you have up to 400. So there are lots of them. And you, you, like that, like um, um, your colleague said, if this is the time where the Nigerian uh, people into business and well wishes, those who really care about Nigeria, who want to control us, how much they care for the leaders of tomorrow, how much they are willing to sacrifice that they impact lives leadership is all about influence and influence comes from good leader you can't lead yourself well you can't even lead others so it's a clear example that we have many leaders that can't even lead themselves talk to talk about and i guess that's why they're afraid to come out to do the needful talking about um, the cost of living uh, thank you for that clarity but what about the cost of living for the students uh, i was giving you an it's example high. Of, it's, yes of an individual who said he spent about a one thousand five hundred dollars Within the past couple of two, three weeks, that all of this crisis has actually peaked. Um, is that a cause for concern for those that are outside? Because, you know, these individuals, these young students, uh, some of them are even old, may come back malnourished, may come back, you know, completely a shadow of themselves uh, when, when they actually escape this conflict. Um, yes, you're very right. In fact, it's even way more than that for... Uh, um, that is the money they spend sometimes in two days or three days. Like I said, others, the hotels have skyrocketed in different countries. You have situations where a hotel that was, let's say, um, 20 euro or let's say $50 before, dollars a night. You know, so they are taking advantage of the, the of the war time. You know, even in you have i remember when my brothers were there i told you guys of a situation where um he, i sent him money for the boat and he had his money to take care of 10 others and at the end of the day in less than a week we're running up to more than five thousand dollars in expenses which was ridiculous because that is even lesser than the more than their school fees for one person so at, at this point in time everything has gone up you know every other around Ukraine is taking advantage of the situation housing have gone up food has gone up you know we have situation even in Nigeria where you have forced scarcity so if you imagine what others who are going through war are dealing with it, so we are let's say most of the students who are in these borders um, let's say in two or three days or let's in four days they'll spend up to two thousand dollars feeding upkeep medication you know two thousand that's the estimate we are looking at in four yeah, days. Yeah. Uh, let's, see, let, if, let, let's, let's get this um, um, correct. Uh, by your data, um, are you saying that there are still some students still trapped in Sumi? Or they are all by the borders? Uh, right no, now? no, 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 no. No, in Sumi, no. Sumi, every single foreigner has left. Right. Every single foreigner has left, which is a good news. But we're saying the data comprises of those we have separate data control of those who are inside Ukraine, we have those who are outside. Right now, is a, a, uh, is a combination of both those and in the borders are yet to come to Nigeria. So every time we have students uh, from the borders, we make sure we click their names. We have database, we have people in different uh, borders, different locations that let us know X, Y amount of students have left, so you can have that in your database. Like we'll also the, give the, the focus, students opportunity yeah. to give us, uh, help us out with information. Yeah. So the focus for our government right now should be uh, how these kids are, are being sustained where they are and how to get them back home if they want to come back home. That's the focus right now. Yeah. So how 
exactly how to start. And also, even when they come back home, what is the contingency well, that, that, plan? That, 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 that's, that's an ongoing conversation, Blessing. That will be an ongoing conversation. But yeah. I think importantly is to get them out of the, the trouble, the trouble, the troubles of um, of the border trouble, yeah. discriminations, and the, the war in Ukraine. That should be paramount right now in the minds of government. When they come back home here, uh, that will be a fresh conversation, which I think, of course, should be uh, being thought about um, on the sideline. And also, apart from them coming back home, those that are staying behind, how well do they have the database of those staying behind? What, see, you don't want them to be nuisance in other countries. You do not want them to, to create chaos. And there, it's, and at the end of the day, you have any illegal activities happening in these countries. And they will target to Africans or Nigerians. Because first of all, we haven't really done a good job as Nigerians having a... Um, um, uh, uh, integrity in so many countries. So the plan is for those who are out there, the government should create an avenue where they be able to monitor and say, okay, those of you who are staying behind, we need your database. We don't have a problem, you guys staying behind, but you have to. Uh, we have to know we have this plan and X Y Z plan for you. If you are going to a school, send us your school. Send us this ways to help. Even if it's a stupend or whatever it is, there's so many of them that were in scholarships. You know, as such, especially exceptional students, those who are very intelligent, those who are good with their academics. You want to, you know, you want to encourage them. So it's going to be a matter of those who stayed behind and those who came back. So now, like you said, the, the most important and urgent issue now is how do these children, when they're evacuated, their accommodation, their feeding, medication, what is the provision for them? How are we going to sustain them these few days? Thank you so much, Blessing Imubosa. Thank you so much for standing by with us at this moment. We appreciate you for all that you've been doing for Nigerian students. And we do hope that you know every single one of them caught in this war, which absolutely is none of their doing, get to safety and get the attention they need and can continue studies in some cases, if they so wish, across Europe and even back home here in Nigeria. We appreciate you for constantly staying with us on this ongoing conversation on the war going on in Ukraine. Um, you're welcome, and um, thanks, Silverbird, to for giving me this great opportunity to air my point of view, and also for our foundation and FSN aid to render assistance. And I also like to say, um, students and parents should not be um, afraid to reach out to emails to send us messages, and we have people who are willing to help and to also contribute the little they can. Nothing is too small. $10, 5000 naira, 2000 naira. It's, it's nothing too small. To, to, it will go a long way for them. We really hope that the next time we'll speak with you, uh, it will be a different narrative uh, when next we'll speak with you on the show. Thank you for your time with us. Blessing the Mabasa. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay. Well, fantastic. You see, I like I like the, the angle that she's bringing to it again. Uh, the need for government to begin to consider um, psychologists when these kids come back home. They need to be reintegrated. They, sh they should have some medical, uh, uh, you know, preparations for them. It's not just bringing them home here. What plans do we have? Are we ready to integrate this, these children into our society? What uh, plans do we have as, for as, them? As it is known, most of the students. If they had a life in Nigeria, would have given up on all of that. If they had a home, if they had finances, if they had jobs, they had given up on all of those things mm. to go and study for a year or two or mm. even more, mm. you know, when they were leaving for Ukraine. So it would be quite difficult for them to resettle in a situation that they might have left in a couple of those yeah. years ago when they were leaving. And of course, not having the finances that they need to actually get back Okay. ongoing yeah definitely david oh. we'll have to leave it at that yes. uh, we will continue with the conversation around women now when we come back from this short break we look at how we can ensure women uh, can enjoy a more blissful business environment here in nigeria as we continue to celebrate the international women's day stay with us